Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at Joy. It's good to have you with us today. If you're a guest with us, we're especially glad that you're here and hope that you'll grow along with us and, uh, and light up this part of the world with the faith and the love that, that Jesus Christ comes to bring us. This morning, we um, are going to be hearing in the Old Testament reading and in the Gospel about how Jesus came to bring light, and we've talked about light, Epiphany, the season after Christmas is a, is a season in which we talk a lot about light. But um, in the gospel for today, we hear that, that, um, that it was particularly dark in the land of Naphtali and, and Zebulun, which was in the, in the Galilee. And uh, this morning, our world, I've been looking forward to seeing the sun shine and haven't seen it much lately. Um, but uh, the darkness in, in the world goes even beyond that. Um, this afternoon, we're going to um, be thanking God and, and remembering our sister Susan um, Knutson, who passed away on Wednesday, and her funeral's at 1.30 today. But, um, you know, that death and sadness and grief and sickness brings some darkness and shadow into our lives as well. But Jesus comes to bring us light. And as we let him live in us with his love and grace and, and, uh, and with his light, um, it can brighten our world no matter what the weather. And as we let that shine in us, it can brighten the lives of others too. Um, as we share the hope that we have, you know, with John and with his family and, and with uh, the people that, that we live among. Um, the way that we live following Jesus um, helps to bring light into the world too. So um, this morning we're going to be singing songs about light. We hope that the light will reach to those who are out in Facebook land today as well. Um, but we're going to start with a song of, about light um, as we sing, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Um, would you like to stand? It's kind of a standing, shining kind of song. So.
like to invite the kids c to come up this morning for our children's message today. So, good morning to all of you. How are you today? G good. And uh, are you having a, a bright and a wonderful day? Yes? All right. Well, very good. I, I know that Riley's having a bright and wonderful day today because yesterday was Riley's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Has any, did anybody else have a birthday this week? Okay. I had mine yesterday. In August, your sister had her birthday yesterday, so you got to celebrate it with her. You went to bed at 1 a.m. after his party? Oh, my goodness. I'm glad you're here today. I would be sleeping. Are you? Excellent. Who's? Okay, cool. Well, how about if we sing happy birthday to Riley today? Can we do that? Because a birthday is really a blessing from God, you know? No. Can, can we just work on the English for today? <laughs> I'm, I'm having trouble singing it all today. So, Okay, so we're going to sing happy birthday today. Ready? Happy birthday to Riley. Happy birthday. Happy to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Riley, happy birthday to you. All right, one more time. Cha-cha-cha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So it's a wonderful name. So now I want you to do this, though. When you have a birthday during the year, on the Sunday, either before or after your birthday, let me know, okay? Because then we'll sing to you too. Excellent. All right. Excellent. So remind us on close to that day, and we'll sing happy birthday to you too, because the best gifts that God gives us are people. So you are a gift to all of us from God as on your birthday. So, and all of you are. So let us know about your birthday so we can sing to you too. Yeah, really. Yeah. Your mom is 800? <laughs> oh, you're 800. I see. I see. Anyway, all right. So here we go. Um, so these are glow sticks. Now, um, we're going to hear in our gospel, in one, of the, in one of the readings that we hear for today in church, it says that the people who lived in, in Galilee, which is where Jesus grew up, um, that they lived in darkness. And they lived in darkness because, not because it was always dark and always cloudy, but they lived in darkness because there were um, uh, mean people that controlled their country. Um, they often, they sometimes didn't have enough to eat. Um, they, some of them got s uh, carried away into slavery um, and, uh, for 800 years. And um, so it was a dark and a difficult place. But then, in, in our reading for today, it says that Jesus came into that dark place in order to be the light of the world, in order to help people know that God loved them, that he was there for them, to um, help set them free from um, all the things that they were scared of, and especially to set them free from being afraid about death, because a lot of them, they died too young. And Jesus came to give eternal life to everybody who believed. And, uh, and so it, the Bible talks about Jesus being the light of the world. Now, this reminds me of when, uh, during the summer, um, we go out camping or we go out for campfires. Do you ever do that? Yeah. And, and, um, and in the darkness, it can be kind of scary. But, it, but then, a lot of times, we'll take these glow sticks and we will make necklaces with them. Do you ever make necklaces with glow sticks? Yeah. Okay. I make one that glows my feet and then it glows my 
Yeah, that's and cool. I, and I just make one. Uh, while I was with mom, um, um, I just put them on my. I, Do you put them on? I would dress up for Spider Man, and then mom just put a red um, cloak around my neck. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So then, if if you were if you were out in the dark and somebody saw that, they they wouldn't be so afraid, would they? You gotta shake it. You gotta shake it. Okay. Okay. So how about if I give you each one? Okay. Red. All right, red. I I don't know if I can give you all the colors you want, but I'll give you a color. Okay. And I got a lot of reds in that handful. Do I have pink? No, I, I don't know. There you go. There you go. You got one? Oh, take another one. I don't know if that one's going to light up. There you go. Uh-huh. Oh, and it. Okay. Oh, oh gross. Don't lick them. Did you get one? You want to grin? Anybody else? Okay, so. <clears throat> so. Um, it's kind of gray outside today, huh? You don't want to do yours yet? Okay, you don't have to do it yet, but if you want to, it's kind of gray outside, and a what? A double one, yes, okay. There you go. And, um, it's kind of gray outside today, and some people might be sad, but if you light this up, and you carry this with you, I'll bet people will look at you and they'll say, and people will say, people will say, oh, that's joyful. That's happy. Thank you for lighting up my world a little bit more today. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, so, um, so if you wear these glow sticks um, or carry them with you, people will see them, and maybe they'll feel a little bit brighter and a little bit happier today. And uh, in the same way, if you believe in Jesus and love him and share his love with others, people will feel a little bit brighter too. It is. That's cool. All right. Will you pray with me? Okay. Dear God, pray after me. Dear God, thank you for being the light of our life. Help us to shine with your light. In other words, to share your love with everyone around us so they can be brightened up too. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, all right. So if you need a divider, okay. And uh, Sunday school is waiting for you. So if you're going to Sunday school, you go on ahead to Sunday school. And if you're going to go sit with your folks, you can go do that. So, no, you can keep it. Okay. There you go. These are so much fun, aren't they? I think we should just all play with these sticks today. Yes. And if you would like one before you leave, the rest of you, you can grab one too. Okay. Thank you very much. And in the meantime, we will all sing our next hymn um, about people who will walk in darkness.
Please rise as we continue our service with the confession and forgiveness. Um, the world is a, a darker place than it needs to be oftentimes because of our sin. But God, with his love and his mercy, comes to brighten our life by forgiving us of our sins and helping us then to share that love and forgiveness with others. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and me, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority then, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the light that you sent into the world in your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that his light now might brighten us in the midst of our sadness, in the midst of our grief, in the midst of our guilt. We pray that you would brighten our lives with your hope, with your peace, and with your forgiveness, so that we then can um, shine and glow with that love um, for all the world to be comforted and brightened too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can be seated. Sue's reading for us this morning. The reading this morning is Isaiah 9, 1 through 4. But there will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zeb Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep dark darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied exultation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors, you have broken as on the day of Midian. This ends the reading.
God promised light to the people who lived in Zebulun and Naphtali, and he sent that light in Jesus Christ, and he promises that light for us as well. And so we um, speak together. The psalmody, would you rise as we prepare to hear the gospel this morning? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? One thing I ask of the Lord, and this I seek. To live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me by my mouth. Hallelujah. This morning our gospel is from Mark chapter 4. And we hear this um, psalm and the, and the first reading coming true as Jesus comes to Naphtali and to Zebulun. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the, of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that day, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. You can be seated. So this morning we hear a lot about, um, we hear a lot about Zebulun and Naphtali, and we hear about the light that that Jesus came to, to bring into their darkness and gloom. Um, this morning, we go back and, and think, first of all, about the Old Testament reading for today from Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah writes in, in chapter 9 that there will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. In Zebulun and Naphtali, the, the, uh, the days were dark. And uh, they had been for a hundred years before Isaiah um, gives his prophecy from the Lord. Isaiah writes, um, or he's writing uh, around the year late 700s, um, and he is, uh, he is talking about the days in which the people of Israel were finding themselves at the time. And, and those days were dark. Um, it was... Uh, um, 800 years before Jesus was born, and um, the, uh, the territories that uh, are Zebulun and Naphtali um, were, were going through very difficult times, and it was very dark for the people who lived in those places. I have a map up here, and the, um, the microwave, whatever this thing is called, that little red light, okay, yeah, it disappears when it goes into the into the screen. So, uh, otherwise, I could show you where that is. But um, anyway, if you see in the in the Mediterranean Sea, there it says Land of Zebulun and Naphtali with a little circle around it. That's where that's where Zebulun and Naphtali are, and uh, they were at the northern edge of the land of Israel. Israel was divided at the time of Isaiah into twelve tribes. Um, Zebulun and Naphtali were, and, and Dan was a little bit further north, but they were at the northern part of the land of Israel. And then as you go south from there, through that green territory, um, that is uh, um, ten other tribes of Israel that were in that territory. 
Um, and at the time, uh, Zebulun and Naphtali were along the, the Sea of Galilee. It's just that tiny little glint of blue that you can see there with a river coming out of it, going down to the Dead Sea, the longer, the longer, um, the longer blue down there. But um, the, um, the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, it, it, was, good, it was good territory. You could, uh, good fishing. Every, you know, everybody likes fishing. Not much ice fishing. But, um, but it, yeah, it, it was good fishing. Um, and the people who lived along the Sea of Galilee in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, they, they tended to be very well, fairly wealthy but, um, because they were fishing. And it's also along a major trade route that goes from Assyria, you see up in the top right-hand, kind of right-hand um, place, in the sandy-looking place, um, part of the map. And it comes, so Assyria was the major dominant power at the time. After that will be the Babylonians, um, a couple of hundred years later, but they're in that same um, territory between the Tigris and Euphrates River at the, at the northeast of this map. And, and then Egypt was down in the southwest little corner. And so these were the two dominant powers in the east, Assyria and Babylon, and in the southwest, uh, Egypt. And the only way to get there is across Israel. Um, the, the gray part is desert. It was impassable. You couldn't get through it. There wasn't enough um, to support armies going across. So, so they would have to go, they would go um, up the Tigris and Euphrates rivers um, on the eastern part, um, and then they would come down. Um, it was called the Fertile Crescent, and there's a reason for that, because it was, you could grow crops, and there were um, uh, crops to, to get, and food to get, and people that you could, uh, who lived along those regions, that you could pick up to be in your army as well. So, um, so they, it was a major land bridge between the two major powers, and so they got a lot of, a lot of uh, armies going through. And that was one of the reasons why it was um, a dark and a dark place for the people that lived there. Um, the major powers were always going back and forth in order to fight each other. And sometimes Israel got dragged into their wars as well. The conquerors needed food and housing and soldiers along the way. And so Israel was always being conquered by somebody, either Egypt or Assyria or Babylon. Um, later on, it would be the Persians. Um, uh, the, who lived in Iran, and uh, they were always being conquered. But in the 700s, um, when Isaiah is writing to, to these people, um, Israel decided that they would align themselves with Egypt in the south rather than trust God. God told them, no, 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 don't go to Egypt. Don't align with the Egyptians. Um, if you do that, you're going to be in big trouble um, stay neutral, wait for me to deliver you, I will be there, I will get you out of this. But they go ahead and align themselves with Egypt. And the Assyrians then, um, they win the battle with Egypt. And so now it's time to reckon with these, these people in between, the Israelites, who, um, who align themselves with the losing cause. Um, and this was not the first time that Israel did not rely on God did not rely on trusting in God. Um, they were uh, far from the temple in Jerusalem. So Naphtali and uh, the, the, the region to the north is 90, 100 miles north of Jerusalem, which is where the temple was. And the temple priests had demanded that everybody in Israel, including the, the northern tribes, they send their offerings and their tithes, 10% of everything that... Um, that they had to the temple for God. And these people up north, they didn't go to the temple. They couldn't get down there for church service on Sundays every day, every week. So, you know, they didn't want to send their money down south. And so they wanted to keep as much as they could for themselves. Um, and so they set up their own holy sites where they could offer their sacrifices and have their religious and community celebrations. And... Um, it was only a small step from there to setting up their own gods and idols so that the people of Israel could be free altogether. Well, God warned them. He, he warned them. He said, you know, don't do that. He sent them prophets for years and years and years to call them to repent, to turn from their stubbornness and their pride and their false god, to turn back to relying on God. But alas, they didn't. And like what happens 
um, often when people decide to rely on their own smarts and their own strength and, and go against God, they were defeated. Assyria came west in uh, 733 to punish the northern kingdom for its uh, participation in these anti-Assyrian activities. They seized the, the territory of, of these northern tribes. They stole their land. They conscripted their able-bodied men and forced them to be soldiers in their, in their armies. They took whole villages and resettled them in other parts of the empire. And they brought captives from those other lands and resettled them in the Israelite, in the Israelite homes. Um, they made uh, life miserable for the people. Um, the territory was, it was uh, next to Assyria, and uh, it was divided into three, three territories that were called, like it says in, in, the, in the reading for today, the Galilee of the Gentiles, um, the, uh, the Way of the Sea, and the, the land beyond the Jordan River. And the Assyrians set up their own gods for the Israelites then to worship as well. The chief god of the, of the Assyrians was Shamash, and he was the sun god. But uh, this god only brought darkness and fear and misery to the people of the north. For 100 years already by the time that Isaiah wrote, and for 700 more years until Jesus comes to the Jordan River, this part of the, the land, um, it, was, it was dark and it was difficult. And uh, life was hard. Well, God promised through Isaiah in our first reading for day, you know, it's been miserable and dark here in these former times, but in the latter time, in the times that are to come, I will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, the Galilee of the Galilees, the, 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 the people who walked in darkness will see a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light will shine. Um, God promises that he will not abandon his people in the midst of their darkness. No matter what they've done, no matter how far they've gone, um, he promises that he will continue to love them and to care for them and be there for them. And he promises that he will save them and bring them, bring them back to him and bring light back to their lives. The, this chapter in Isaiah continues, you know, God is going to, he promises that the people will see a great light. And then he says, for a child has been born to us, a son is given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. God had a plan, and uh, there was nothing that was going to keep him from making that plan come true. Finally, it was time for that plan to be born, 700 years after Isaiah. When everything was just exactly right, God put his plan into, into um, motion. Jesus left Nazareth, we're told in our gospel. He made his home at Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might indeed be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has Draw, has, has uh, dawned. God was very purposeful in, in fulfilling his promise that he would save and bring light back to his people. Every detail, down to moving from Nazareth to, to Capernaum, which is in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, every um, part of that plan, God was going to bring into fruition. And so Jesus begins to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, re return to God. It was the message of all the prophets. It was the message of John the Baptist as he comes to prepare the way. And it was the message of Jesus as well. Repent and return to God. Return to trusting him and obeying him. He loves you. He, he cares about you. He wants to help you. Let him help you. That's basically what repentance is all about. And that is the major problem that they had after all, and that we've all had finally and ultimately from the time of Adam and Eve. Really, we, we tend to trust in ourselves and in what we can make. We turn away from God in our faith because we need something more tangible to believe in, even if it's just ourselves. 
and so we end up in a lot of trouble. But God's promise is that he has not abandoned us. He, has not, he did not abandon the people of Israel for 800 years, and he did not abandon the people in the first century, and he has not abandoned us either. And finally, that's, that's the meaning of Jesus. As Jesus comes to Zebulun and Naphtali, he comes to fulfill that, that, um, that promise and that reality. Emmanuel, Jesus is called in Matthew's gospel. Um, his nickname is God is with us. God is with us to give us hope, to help us with everything that is making life dark and miserable. He comes and he invites us to believe in that and to trust him. And so as Jesus comes into the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, he comes healing. This uh, gospel talks a lot about all the things that Jesus did and all the people that he healed. Hundreds of people from all over flock to him there and he makes them well. And he fights, he fights their battles with evil as well. He fights the devil out in the wilderness. He's tempted for 40 days, but he remains faithful to God's plan and to, and to God's purpose. He resists the temptation like, like the Israelites, um, you know, to take the easy way. Um, he resists the temptation to let the people just proclaim him king without actually doing the battle that needed to be done. Because you see, our battle is not with flesh and blood. St. Paul says our, our battle in this world is with, it's not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers in heavenly places, with evil and temptation, with um, relying on ourselves alone, with not trusting in God and not being faithful. And so Jesus comes and fights that battle for us all the way, all the way to the cross, remaining faithful um, and, and finally dying for us, going all the way. And then being victorious by being faithful all the way to the end, he rises from the grave to share his victory and his kingdom with all of us. And the people who have been praying for 750 years for, for God to help them, they begin to have hope again. And uh, the light dawns for them, and they are drawn to this light, to Jesus. They flock from all over all over the, the land of Israel and all over the world. Flock like um, moths to a light. Um, come looking for that light and that hope for themselves. And Jesus says, come then, um, follow me. Trust God. He loves you. He cares about you. As he walks by the Sea of Galilee in our gospel, he sees two brothers, Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. They're casting their net into the sea. They're fisher they're fisher folk. And, and he says to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. And these four guys are just examples of, of how desperate people were and how joyful they were at that light coming into their lives. And Jesus calls us as well. He calls to us as well, come, follow me, trust me. I love you. I care about you. I'm here for you. And there's a, a lot of darkness in our lives too. Um, sadness, grief, um, people die. We lose jobs, families fight. We don't know how to pay the taxes some years. Uh, the government seems kind of crazy sometimes. Um, there's all kinds of wars. I mean, it is no different than 2,800 years ago, you know, in Zebulun and Naphtali. Follow me, Jesus says. Follow me. Trust me. Trust God. It will all turn out okay. Let that hope and joy flow you th through you as well. You know, it's like those glow sticks. Um, you know, hold on to it. Um, break it. You know, let that light shine. Let it bring hope and joy to you. And then, and then um, put it around you. Let that light shine in you. I mean, we have a lot of reason to hope. And we have a lot to share with people who are going through difficult times. You know, th th think about those who have, are, are grieving and missing loved ones, you know, whose lives are, are somewhat dark. 
um, as we share their, their sadness and their grief and come alongside of them, we can also let that, that light and that hope that we have, you know, shine through us and bring a little bit of light and hope to them. We can uh, pick up the phone and call. You know, John, you know, John after, after Susan passing away, he's going to need people who have got the light of Jesus in them, you know, hope and love, love, you know, to reach out to him. You know, just give him a call and invite him to coffee or, or um, see how we can come alongside and, and bring some light into his life, into the life of their family. As that light has come into, I know, families here and into your lives as we've shared that hope and that light together. Um, that, uh, that light that Jesus brought to Zebulun and Naphtali, it lives in us as we trust in God. And as we let that light and that hope shine in us for all the world to see. Amen. Let's um, sing together our next song, Longing for Light We Wait in Darkness, um, a prayer of Christ to be our light. Christ, we pray that you would be our light, that you would shine in our hearts, that you would shine through the darkness and brighten our lives. Be our light, Lord, here at Joy, and help us to shine in, in the world with your lights and with your hope and with your peace. We pray, Lord, for your peace and light to come into the lives of those who are hurting and struggling today, for all of those 
that, um, that are sick and hurting that we name before you in our hearts. We pray, Lord, for your healing and for your peace and your strength. We pray for those who are missing loved ones, Lord, that you would give them your comfort and peace as well. We pray especially for, for John Knutson and for his family as they miss Susan and for all those who are missing her as well. Grant them your light and your comfort and your peace. We pray for your light in the world as well, that you would help us and, uh, and all of those who lead us as well, Lord, to follow your light, to, um, to um, do what is right and what is just and what will make for peace. We pray, Lord, um, that you would hear all of our prayers, the prayers that are in our hearts, and um, hear and answer them, we pray, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Let's take a moment to share God's peace with one another. At this time, we'll receive our offering as we um, share the light and the peace that God has given us with the world. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the light that you have given to us in Jesus Christ. Receive these gifts, Lord, we pray, that we give to you out of our thanks and uh, use them to bring light to the world. In Jesus' name. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to always give thanks to God, but especially today in this uh, meal of light as Jesus comes to give us his body and blood, his life and forgiveness and peace. It was at supper on the night that our Lord Jesus was betrayed that he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And on that dark night also, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so remembering Jesus, we pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite our communion assistants to come up this morning. And uh, we invite everyone to come and um, receive this love and grace of God in this Holy Communion today. May this body and blood of our Savior Jesus which he has given to you and to me because he loves us so very much. May it strengthen us in faith. May it fill you with light and with joy and with peace and help us to shine with that light in, um, in all of our world. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you all his peace. Amen. We have a couple of announcements this morning. First of all, um, Hope has some announcements for us uh, this morning. Some pieces of light and joy. Right. Basically, <clears throat> just a, a reminder again that our annual meeting is Tuesday, Tuesday, Sunday, February the 5th, um, after service. We'll have a light lunch, and then we'll come back in sanctuary and, and have our annual meeting. It's always an important meeting, so please plan on attending. Um, 
I don't know that it'll be on Facebook, but you can't participate if you're on Facebook. So please plan on attending and coming. And um, one of the things that we're going to do is um, adopt the few revisions that the Synod recommended for our Constitution. So I will have some copies out at the welcome desk. If you want to take it home and read it, more than welcome. But um, that is one of the items of business that we'll, we'll have during the meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, also, just a reminder again, um, um, Susan Knutson's funeral is today at 1.30, and there'll be um, time to visit and um, refreshments afterwards to visit with the family. So um, please remember John and all of his family and the friends of Susan's here, too, that are missing her a lot. Um, and, you know, find some ways to reach out and, and care for them, for, for John, um, during the weeks to ha ahead. And then finally, another piece of light for us from um, our treasurer, um, Jim. Just two very brief announcements before I get into the treasurer's report. Uh, Ed Glovitz and I sent out all of the uh, giving statements for the year 2022. Uh, we emailed them to all of you who requested an email, and then we mailed the remaining. Now, if you did not get your, your statement uh, in either mail form or email form, uh, just call the office and, and, and let them know, and we will get it to you uh, and, and follow up. Sometimes it just gets missed. The other thing is, uh, talk to Mary Jo Copeland, and we have set a new date for sharing and carrying hands. It is the first Tuesday in March. That's March 7th. So we'll be working uh, Monday and Tuesday to prepare it and, uh, and, and get downtown. Uh, so we'll start working on that activity right after the annual meeting. Now, some great news. I, was, uh, I promised you last time I was up here, uh, we, we, we had a terrific month for December. The, the first thing I want to show you, though, is how we ended November. <clears throat> and we'll follow the numbers through just very briefly, but <clears throat> get, getting down to the, uh, to the middle there where it is a loss year to date or a deficit, uh, as we'll name it, of over $18,000. That, that, that's how far we were behind in comparing what we have for revenue to what we were paying out as expenses. And I'm gonna keep that up there just because the numbers are so fantastic for December, I want you to be able to see the, 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 the difference. Uh, up on top, it starts out with budget, but look at the revenue number for November, 32,500. The revenue for December almost $62,000. Uh, I mean, uh, this just didn't set a record. It, it just stampeded it. it. It just blew it away. It's, it, we've never had anything close to this. And as we get down then to the loss or the deficit for the year, we turn that $18,300 into a gain or a surplus of $10,000, what a way to start the new year. This was just fantastic. And then look what it did to our cash uh, uh, position. The general fund went from 12,000 available for us to pay our bills to 35,000. And cash in the bank from 37 to 59. I tell you, it was a tremendous month to, to end uh, what was gonna be maybe a difficult year, but uh, prayers are definitely answered and he came through, we trusted in him, uh, we, we had faith, and uh, thanks to all of you, thanks to God, and uh, great numbers, you all should be so proud of yourself. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Let's um, rise then, God sends us out with his light and with his grace to um, share that in all of the world sent forth by God's blessing.
indeed alive and risen, and he is here with us and shines in this place, shines in you. We see that um, in the offering from December and from every month as well. You know, God's light and his, his love flow here in, in this place. And now we take it out into the world to share his love with others. Um, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.